put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. In from another world, movie review. A US Air Force base in the Arctic discovers a flying object that has landed near them and decide to bring something that might have been alive inside of it, excuse me, back to their base. But what will they find when the ice that it was, the block of ice that it was frozen in falls? This is a loose adaptation of who goes there and really only gets just a few elements of it. If, if you've read that story and haven't watched a single one of these movies, if you want sort of the, the main concept of that story explored, this is not your movie, plain and simple. It really wasn't even trying to be. I'm not sure why, but it wasn't. It only takes the setting and I guess the, the start of the story and, and a few other elements, but not the main concept. And for anyone who hasn't read the short story, it's a decent read if you want to, you know, if you, if you love the, the 82 version and you want some more sort of perspective on, if, if you want to see where it all started, sort of, it's a decent read. It's, it's typical of its time, though. Do remember it's from the late 30s. But it's, it's a relatively short read, like three hours or so. Anyway, getting back to this one. I will start with the positives, because there certainly are positives with this one. For anyone who hasn't ever watched, like, any of these 50s horror, 50s sci-fi movies, yes, a lot of them do live down to that stereotype. They are really, you know, it's, it's, it's forced perspective, and which they had just learned how to do, and basically just these kind of dumb creature features with not that much thought put into them, but there are some really good ones. This one is a pretty good one of them. It's... There is a little bit of uncertainty if this really was directed by Howard Hawks or if it was more... The dude has a Danish sounding name, so I'm going to pronounce it in Danish, Christian Nubu, who directed it. But I don't really care. Basically, my point is, it looks and feels like a Howard Hawks movie. And if you don't know who Howard Hawks is, you're cutting me deep. The man really knew how to make movies. The original Scarface, this, yeah, there's, there's some real, and, and, yeah, this, this really feels like one of his movies. It gets the setting really well, you, you know, you, you feel the, the isolation, that is something this gets from the short story really well. This is not a spoiler at all, pretty early on. Basically, they lose all radio contact, and 
yeah, they're, they're kind of trapped where they are in this base. They can't contact their... What's it called? Their, their higher end commands, you know. And, you know, in, in spite of trying to, to use the radio to contact, it just, it's not happening. And it, it gets that sort of isolation quite well. It's a really gripping movie. I, I would not say it's a, a thematically strong movie, or at least it's not that interesting as far as the themes go. But considering that, it is really... you, you get quite into it. They use their monster really well. It's not that compelling of a monster. I'm not going to give away what it is exactly here, but the the way they show it, or should I say, not show it, you barely see the monster. And I don't think there's a single close up. I actually read that they removed the close ups because. It's, it's like with Jaws, it didn't work out the way they wanted it to, the effects just were not doing the job, so they said, okay, we're gonna just, no. You know, in Jaws they said, okay, cut away from the fake looking mechanical shark, and in this they said, okay, drop the close-ups of the monster, and it's far more mysterious that way. And because you hardly ever see it in the entire duration, it's really, really creepy and really mysterious, and when you see it, you are just freaked out. There, there, I literally jumped tonight watching this movie. And it's not my first viewing. The character stuff is pretty decent. I, I gotta be honest, I have little trouble telling all, several of these guys apart. A lot of it is that I don't know them from anything else, but yeah, they they are distinct, different characters, except for the fact that they all talk the exact same. But I'll get more into that. Um, it keeps to a quite good pace. The story tends to be moving forward and. It's a lean 83 minutes, so th there isn't that much time for it to stand still either. But still, it keeps moving. It doesn't take very long establishing something before moving on. I would say this is sci-fi... You can call this movie sci-fi horror, I would say it's more sci-fi than horror. And it's more fi than sci. The science is dubious. Some of these things, I think they actually did know better, but it just didn't make for quite as fantastic movie making. So yeah. Now... That more or less closes out the positives. The last positive segues nicely into the negative. The dialogue is quite clever. It's a lot of fast talking, talk, people talking over each other, interrupting each other and such. And the humor genuinely works. Uh, maybe a little too well, in fact. It undercuts a lot of the tension, which Hawk spent so much effort building up, and to quite good effect, mostly except for when the dialogue kind of botches it, because these guys are just constantly cracking jokes. You have this huge crew. That's actually also something they got from the, the short story. It has like 37 crew members or something. 
I think they might have that in this as well. Which also really, really does not do much for your ability to be able to tell these people apart. Because obviously some of these guys are not going to be in very many frames of the movie. And yes, I do mean literally frames. Some of them just barely there at all. Which really makes it feel pointless. I don't know why they couldn't have just had fewer characters and just combined some of the things. I, I guess they were going for realism, which I can appreciate. They were... They were big on military, they had just... You know, this is very much a product of its time. I'll get more into that. So, uh, World War II just over. People were pretty happy that they had a working military, and so they probably wanted to be realistic about the Air Force, and thus there is an actual... There, there are a bunch of people in this. It's not just five guys. Anyway, the... yeah, they... That was, I was getting back to the dialogue. That was it. The... Basically, you have this huge crew, all of them constantly being witty and cracking jokes. Even in mostly, supposedly tense scenes, or some of the, yeah, actually, the scenes that are actually tense are when these characters actually, rarely, shot up. They, they are constantly talking. I, I suppose this movie was made before it was realized that you don't need to be constantly jabbering away. Huh. Constantly jabbering away to entertain people. You need little pauses in there that help you breathe. Especially when they're talking so fast and everyone is talking and they're just, they're, they're basically doing comedy routines some of the time with just each line building on and it becomes like an, an Abbott and Costello gag where just, like there's this running gag about the captain whose name escapes me at the moment which goes to show how to, there, there are too many characters and they're too bland in this movie because this was before culture was seen as, you know, acceptable. Or anything other than, you know, Wonder Bread kind of culture in American cinema. Yeah, the, the captain basically has a crush on this girl and she kind of wants... I don't know what their deal is. They both seem to want to get together. But they just keep dancing around it. I have no idea why. And every time they get together, they're talking about, shouldn't we get together? And just don't know what their deal is. Anyway, everyone in the camp knows it. And they're like constantly teasing him, and they do a lot with that. Again, a bunch of the time, it is... A, bunch of the, a bit of the time, it is genuinely funny. It's just that it wears out its welcome. And... As I said, it, they're, they're constantly talking fast, and constantly talking, and frankly, a third of the dialogue is basically filler. They're just yammering on, without, either without saying anything or just belaboring a point. It's really obnoxious. Now, the, the music is really over the top. There's this early scene where they, they're going out to the spaceship, basically, and it's just guys walking, and there are these, what do you call them, sled hounds, I guess, walking with them, and the music is just trying to tell you that this is the biggest thing that has ever happened. And it's just ridiculous. It, it really oversells it. Again, like with the dialogue, when the music eases off, I'm not saying when it shuts out completely, but when the music isn't so bombastic, it works 
so excuse me so much better in creating tension. Now the I suppose I could talk about the how much of a product of its time this is. The xenophobia and racism are as blatant as they are genuinely uncomfortable. Again, it was right after World War II and America was realizing that maybe we shouldn't have allied with communist Russia and, or yeah, the Soviet Union and yeah, now there was this new enemy. So, yeah, post-World War II, early Cold War, xenophobia, anti-red propaganda. And, yeah, it's... I, I don't blame it for it being that, but it is something that is frustrating when watching a movie. And the jingoism is really annoying as well. I mentioned earlier that it gets the setting pretty well. It gets the isolation, but the cold... Basically, the movie makes you think that it is cold where they are. But, these American airmen, you know, this American military it's just shrugging it off because they're the they're American and they're the military, so they're twice awesome. They just it can't touch them, not at all. And yeah, this just really removes a lot of potential tension because a lot of it is this really potentially deadly climate and this really threatening physical environment and yeah they're just they're making jokes you know cold enough for you literally I'm not even making that up someone says that I think that might be the first line of the movie do stay with the movie I can imagine a lot of people might give up right there but do stay with the movie it is actually it gets better you know, to, to quote that uh, I suppose pro-homosexual campaign, you know, it, it, it gets better, even even if you do think that that first thing, yeah. I think that pretty well covers it. But yeah, it's, it is a good film. It, it has inspired a lot of later filmmakers. And there are some really, there, there's some really great artistry in here. You can really tell. I mean, when you look away from the excessive dialogue, which Again, I, I want to make it absolutely clear, a lot of the dialogue is really good, and even the stuff that is excessive is not poorly written, it's just that there's too much of it, and it's in the wrong movie. It, it, this is not Abbott and Costello discover a UFO, this is the thing from another world. This is supposed to be a horror movie. I think. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be a horror movie. There are, there are genuinely scary moments. And you, you look away from, you look past the, the, the stuff that is in the movie because of the time it was made. It is a good movie and it has a lot of good elements to it. Please rate and comment and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.